Hello Booktube, on this particularly unpleasant Tuesday, I'm going to be doing the U-Tag, uh, created by Jim of Jim's Books, Reading, and Stuff. U is for Unicorn. What is your favorite fantasy creature? Uh, for this, I'm going to have to go with the Exceed from Fairy Tale. The Exceed are a species of anthropomorphic cats who can magically summon wings. That's their most common pow uh, magical power, although some Exceed have other powers. Um, the Exceed uh, originally uh, come from a parallel dimension to Earthland, the primary setting of fairy tale called Edelus. Uh, the queen uh, foreseeing the doom of her species because the humans of Edelus were eventually going to eradicate them because the Exceed are the only beings in Edelus who naturally possess magic compared to Earthland where 10% uh, of the human population uh, possess magical abilities or the ability to access magic or something. It could also be all of them. And anyway, so... The Exceed, uh, so the Queen sent a hundred um, Exceed eggs. Um, the Exceed uh, lay eggs instead of having live birth um, to Earthland. Oh, one of the Exceed eggs happened into the possession of Natsu, a young wizard in the Fairy Tale Guild, and eventually um, Happy was hatched. Um, and Happy is the uh, companion of Natsu. Um, for the entirety of the series. We are basically first introduced to Natsu and Happy in the very first scenes of chapter one. Um, gradually more Exceed are introduced. Um, Carla, who's the uh, companion of Wendy. Um, Panther Lily, who originally serves the kingdom of Edelus, but later betrays him when he learns that the Edelus, the human government of Edelus, well, we're going to genocide his people. So he uh, turned, switched sides, and then was dragged into Edelus with the, I mean, was sent to Earthland with the rest of the Exceed population when um, the magic was ripped from Edelus and transferred entirely to Earthland. Um, and then later on, there are uh, Froche and Lecter, who are the companions of uh, Sting and Road, who are later characters. And then there's other Exceed, although they really don't play much of a role after um, their specific arc in Edelus. Um, next prompt. US, uh, U is for USA. If you are from the U.S., which state are you living in? What is special about that state? So I live in the state of Texas, and at the moment, uh, the state government is making it hard to see much positive about the state. Um, uh, anyway, um, I would say the landscape the sort of a variety of landscapes in Texas. Um, Texas is such a large state, much like California, that uh, the geography, the environment shifts from the coasts to um, the western deserts, from sort of the, the south to the north. So it's like a very, very varied state. Um, also, there is the city of Austin which counts for something but um yeah so far i mean well i think texas state government's always been bad too terrible um and currently texas state government is in the throes of a really sadistic um, political wing of the Republican Party. Anyway, moving on to uh, next prompt. Uh, U is for USA and USSR. 
Do you have a favorite book about the Cold War? Yes, um, Post Wall, Post Square by Christina Spohr. Uh, this is a history of the final years of the Cold War and of the dissolution of the uh, Communist bloc. It is a wonderful book. Um, if you haven't read it, I highly, highly recommend it. It is disheartening that it has that post wall post square hasn't gotten the attention I think it deserves. Um, U is for Uruguay, Uganda, United Arab Emirates, Ukraine, Uzbekistan, and Upper Volta, now known as Burkina Faso. Have you read any books connected with any of these countries? Um, yes, well, I have in my collection um, a biography of Idi Amin by, I think it's Mark Leopold, which I haven't gotten to yet. Also, um, Iran, A Modern History by Abbas Amanat um, features um, Uzbekistan in part, uh, I think during the reign of the Safavids. Um, the Safavids went to war with um, states that are now part of Uzbekistan, or included parts of Uzbekistan. Um, and of course I've read histories of the Soviet Union, which would include the Ukraine. Um, also, Republics of the New World, I think include Uruguay. Um, and Dictatorland, I think, references um, Upper Volta, or Burkina Faso, in some fashion. Um, so I'll try to link, remember to add most of these in the show notes. Uh, you is for Underwater. What is your favorite book set underwater? Um, I would say maybe The Scar by... China Medieval. The Scar is uh, the second book in his Boss Log series, um, arguably the best of the three, and it's about um, a refugee from New Crobuzon who is uh, forcibly um, settled in the pirate city of Armada. Armada is a motley collection of uh, combined uh, pirate ships um, and they the city grows by uh, forcibly incorporating the um, ships they capture and the crews and passengers um, and Bellis who is the main protagonist she's a linguist who um, inserts herself into a scheme by the leaders of one of the uh, factions in Armada to uh, capture a gigantic being to take the ship into the um, uh, the city into uh, a an, an relatively unexplored part of uh, Boss Log. And there are scenes set underwater um, which are amazing. Um, that's I think the only book I have that are that's partially set underwater. Um, I also have um, Wild Sea by Joy McCann, which is a history of the Southern Ocean, which is amazing, and partially set underwater, although it's mostly about the ocean itself, which I think would count. And I also have a uh, I think it's Brilliant Abyss by. Uh, Helen Scales, um, that I picked up uh, a few months ago that I'm planning on reading uh, next month. And I'll add that one too, because that's about the exploration of the um, deepest oceans. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I'm hoping that'll be a favorite. <laughs> uh, you is for Umbrella. What is a good book for a rainy day? Well, it depends... I mean, because sometimes when it's a rainy day, you want an appropriately haunting or an appropriately sad book. 
but at the same time, maybe you want a comforting book. So I don't really know. Um, I don't really mood read based on the environment. Um, I typically, like the book I'm reading at the time is pretty much what I'm reading. Um, U is for urban fantasy. Have you read any urban fantasy? Yes. Um, urban fantasy is a weird genre or subgenre of fantasy. So in part, urban fantasy describes um, what you could also call contemporary fantasy, which is a fantasy set in the real world or a version of the real world in which magic and the fantastical exist alongside humans, um, often in a urban setting, um, although sometimes not. Um, urban fantasy can also refer to um, uh, oh, works set in completely made up worlds in which the setting is primarily a city. So say for example, um, Pretty Doe Street Station by China Medieval is set completely in the city of New Krubuzon. So that would count as urban fantasy, although more typically it is described as uh, New Weird. Um, but as far as uh, the second question, do you have a favorite book in this subgenre? I do, I mean, if you like Count, say Pretty Doe Street Station. Um, also, um, City of Lost Fortunes by Brian Camp, um, which is set in New Orleans. Um, I really enjoy. I also add in um, The Last Sun by Katie Edwards, which is part of his tarot sequence, um, which is set in or on the island of Nantucket, which is part of that Martha's Vineyard um, area of uh, Massachusetts, which Steve Donahue mentions all the time. Although in this rendering, uh, Nantucket has become a um, urban setting as New Atlantis. Um, and I, like, I love the series or maybe I love the idea of the series more than the execution. But, I mean, I do enjoy the series. I'm going to add it too. Um, you is for Ulysses. What does Ulysses mean for you in your reading life? Normally, me being completely annoyed that somebody's forgetting to translate Latin into Greek because Ulysses is Odysseus and unless we're talking about like Latin authors please stick to Odysseus particularly in the 20th century uh, particularly recently I know a lot of um, earlier writers canonical writers would have used Ulysses um, that is the more uh, the Latin forms of the Greek gods uh, were used, but more recently it's the Greek forms and it's Odysseus. But also I think of Odysseus more in terms of uh, my love of Greek mythology. Um, you is for unread. Roughly what percentage of the books on on your shelves remain unread um i don't know for sure um i'm too lazy to uh, go through my um library catalog and tick off who i've read who i haven't read uh do i count bales do i count um how do i count omnibuses um so but i'm going to roughly guess about 60 to 70 percent could actually be less than that but i think 60 to 70 percent is a good range for a guess um i think that might be one thing i do next year is maybe focus on reading my collection 
and I mean I'll still add to my collection because I do love getting books it makes me happy but yeah kind of focusing on reading my collection rather than maybe checking books out from the library or ebooks or uh, well I mean if the pandemic's still going on I'm not going to go to the library so yeah I'll be reading my own collection anyway um bonus prompts which of the following authors most appeals to you leon yours who was i think a historical novelist but also a thriller writer umberto echo who's a um, literary fiction writer and critic and ursula k Le Guin, who is primarily known as a science fiction and fantasy writer or author. Um, I never read Eurus, um, and the plot description of one of the books I read of his doesn't really appeal to me. At the same time, I have bailed on Echo. Um, I tried The Name of the Rose ages ago and no. No. And Ursula K. Le Guin, I've read a number of works by her, but I don't think she particularly appeals to me. Um, I read like The Dispossessed, which is okay, but didn't really wow me. Um, the Word for World is Forest, again, okay, but didn't really wow me. Um, I built on the left hand of darkness um, and Wizard of Earthsea. Uh, was poo. <laughs> it's it was horrible. I, I just maybe if I read it when I was much younger. I might I might find I found it appealing, but no, it just did not work out for me at all. But of the three, I guess I would go with Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, but eh, it's only because it's a choice of those three. Unfortunately, there are there are any historians with you names. Anyway, moving on. U is for UFO. Have you seen a UFO? Um, have you enjoyed a book exploring the first contact with aliens? Um, I don't think I've ever seen a UFO. Um, at all. Um, Um, have I enjoyed a book about first contact? Uh, hmm. You know, I don't know if I have any books with first contact in, I don't know if I've ever actually read one. A story with a first contact. Um, I'm going to have to punt on that one. And finally, you is for upcoming. What book release are you looking forward to? Um, so let's go to my Amazon. So I'm going to be spoiling some of my uh, book hauls because I've got uh, quite a few books on pre-order. Um, of course there is in January, um, the big biography of Maria Teresa by Barbara Stolberg Rillinger. I think that's her name. Um, also in November, there is The Last King of America by uh, Andrew Roberts. There's also The Greeks of Global History by Roderick Beaton, whose uh, book, um, Greece Biography Modern Nation, is fantastic. Um, of course, I mean, well, they just came out last week, so I'm not going to count them. Also, there's American Comics of History by Jeremy Dauber that I'm going to be picking up. 
There's also uh, the First Civil War by H.W. Brands. I'm quite looking forward to, although I don't know necessarily if I'm going to pre-order it or pick it up later. And quite a few others that I have. I mean, I do have a massive wish list of stuff. Um, also, outside of history, there is um, The Veiled Throne by... Ken Liu, which is the final volume of his um, Dandelion Dynasty trilogy. There's um, Moon Witch and the Sp Moon Witch Spider King uh, by Marlon James, which is the second book in his trilogy that started with the Black Leopard Red Wolf. Um, uh, the Hourglass Throne by Katie Edward, which will be coming out in May. Yes, even though I do have issues with it, I'm still probably going to pick up that book. At some point, The Fruit's going to be coming out by Naman Gobert Telehan. There's quite a few. I don't know if I'm going to list all of these down below, um, because it's quite a bit, and I might forget while I'm uploading what books I mentioned here. But that was the U-Tag, which did cheer me up so uh, thank you Jim um, and if you would like to do this tag of course you are tagged um, so booktube I will see you tomorrow maybe with a ta another tag video maybe something else I don't know but until then booktube thank you have a great afternoon and stay safe